You know, I had this interesting question that was uh, sent to me yesterday from a follower on my email list. This is a person who had requested a copy of my sales script, really enjoyed the content that I give in thus far and has been very engaging, very active in my community, always commenting on the videos, always sharing with me their, their milestones, their achievements. And this person approached me yesterday and asked me what would be the, you know, what would be more advantageous? What would be more lucrative uh, as far as compensation goes? Uh, a loan officer, being a loan officer or being a real estate agent? And I, I understood where he was trying to go and he basically wanted to say, hey man, I just wanna choose the path that's gonna give me the most money, the most return. And I can't knock him, you know, that's that's definitely, you know, uh, our ROI, if you if that makes sense, right? It's our return on investment, and if we're gonna go through this hustle and grind, we got to make sure that we get, you know, the most return for the time that we've invested. And so, I want to talk about that because that's going to touch on the topic today in Emotional Intelligence Week (EI Week), and today's episode is going to be geared around self awareness. Why I think self awareness is key is because that is the number one rule of how we root our decisions. It's, it's our gauge, it's our measurement, it's our, our checkpoint, if that makes sense. And so in this video, if you've ever caught yourself asking the question, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> or am I, if, am I, what I'm currently doing right now, am I on the right path? Am I supposed to be doing this right now? And you're asking yourself this because there's that sense of doubt if whether or not the time you're putting in in this direction is right for you. If you've ever felt that way or ever felt lost or confused at whether or not your current path is going to end up where you expect it to, right? With with all the results that you desire and are not sure and you just, you're just looking for an answer, almost getting to the point where you're frustrated, you're gonna wanna watch this video because I believe the only way to truly answer that is by having self-awareness. Let's go. Hey. My team came from the bottom on the rise, yeah. God, please don't get me lost in this ride, yeah. Went to sleep, I had a dream of that fish scale. Fish woke up and put it right on the street at retail. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel, and I am your host. In this episode, we're going to talk about self-awareness. As I would mentioned, you know, this week itself, today is the 7th of November, 2018. And during, you know, the last couple of days, I've dedicated the videos and the episodes towards certain pieces of emotional intelligence. First, we went over status. Then we went over uh, what I call mirroring, understanding basically how to read emotions, selling with emotions. And today we're gonna talk about self-awareness and we're gonna actually look inward, right? Because I believe that self-awareness is something that we all should really practice and at some point um, really need to admit to ourselves. And self-awareness is something that you know you don't necessarily go into a meeting group and talk about <laughs> this is not definitely something that starts off as a social topic and so i hope that this video shares with you how to find a way to discover yourself and when i say discover yourself i'm not talking about your sex boo boo you know whatever direction you swing more power to you but what i'm talking about self-awareness is you need to understand and truly own your weaknesses. And then you also need to identify what your real strengths are. You see, I believe that, and this is gonna be based on experience, I believe that we have a lot of influence around us, more so now because of the way social media works and technology works, that we get to see the highlight reel, meaning you get to see, it's kind of like seeing the highlights of a sports event, but you're seeing maybe an influencer's feed. And so you see the nice car, the nice watch, the cash, the boat, the island, and you have this belief that that's the way they live every day. And so we naturally compare ourselves like, hey, how come they could get it, but I can't. And then that same influencer who has all these great shiny things says that you could do whatever you put your mind to. 
you just need to believe that you could do it. And because there's so much information kind of geared around that topic, and we are, are vulnerable naturally because we are just looking for a higher power to listen to. This is why religion's so strong, right? Or why we are wired from birth to listen to the adults and listen to elders. Some of you, some of you guys are just rebels by, <laughs> rebels by nature. And hey, I'm with you. You know, I, I didn't really listen to my elders either. But at the same time, we listened to somebody and that somebody was a source of influence. Follow me now because it's going to make sense in just a minute. Whatever you followed, whether it's an influence of a gang, influence of a teacher, influence of per parents, guardians, elders, your neighbor, your unk, whatever it was, it was someone who influenced you to walk, talk, and act the way you act right now. <laughs> it's weird. And so anyway, having self-awareness up until this day is basically your DNA. It's how you really, really are. You see, no one's really gonna know who you are because regardless of who you, what influencer you watch or what influencer you see on social media, it's all gonna come down to actually how you operate. You have your own chemistry. Your fears do not match their fears. Your insecurities do not match their insecurities. Your strengths do not match their strengths. Regardless if that influencer says, just put your mind to it, just focus on it, just work, work, work. You see, before we invest our time to figure out this point of return, just as my friend who asked me, you know, a follower on Sales Remastered, asked me which one is best. Is being a loan officer better or being a real estate agent better? And that's not exactly how the question was formed. The question came out, hey, who makes more money? Loan officers or real estate agents? <laughs> And uh, you know, so I answered him. I said, "Well, it, I, there's just you know, there's so many variables, bro. Like um, a loan officer can do more transactions. They can have repeat business more often than a realtor because how many times can you sell the same person a house, right? Whereas in in refinance or or real estate financing, you can do multiple uh, transactions for a person." within that year, especially if they own investment properties or second homes. I got clients where I worked with twice in the same year. I have a repeat clients, customers all the time. And this is just the way life is. And so technically, I can do more business than a real estate agent. However, a real estate agent, depending on their market, depending on their brokers, depending on their area, you know, are they selling in, in Podunk, Idaho with like a $60,000 average loan amount? Or are they in Newport Beach with an average loan amount of 2.5? Does that make sense? So it just depends. There's so many different variables. And so the best way that I can answer it was, hey, okay, so a loan officer can do more transactions. And this is the best way that I can answer it. I said, hey, a you know, you have to look inward. You have to really understand what your true passion is, what your true strengths are. And if you find yourself ever saying, man, I really like doing numbers, I like figuring out formulas, I like to create a financial plan that is basically a solution. I really like to help impact people's everyday life by showing them a source of income or maybe a, an additional surge of income through an idea, create this, this breathing room. I like providing solutions then you're gonna be want to be a loan officer, right? Because that's just something that's part of your everyday life is we sell solutions. Whereas if you like helping people find their new home and that's your thing, like, oh man, this is gonna be where your kids grow up. Oh man, I really like to learn about the history of this neighborhood. Oh man, I really, really, really dig this style of house and I wanna show everybody about this house. Well then guess what? Real estate agent is gonna be your thing. But it's not, it should never be what the end result is. And I think that's why we follow influencers so too often. You see, when we see the Ferrari or when we see the Lambo or when we see the entrepreneur with this $9,000 suit, we try to figure out and calculate because we are naturally problem solvers. We try to figure out real quick and say, well, how do they do it? Oh, it must be because they work 30 hours a day or it must be because they took a lot of risk, or oh, it must be because they've been doing it for a very long time. You see, if that's the way you respond, then that's self-awareness right there. You need to understand how you react to things. If you react to things as to basically justify other people's success and not use it as reason to, to motivate yourself and say, hey man, I can do the same exact thing, I'm gonna figure this out. <laughs> right then that's self-awareness how do you really react let me show you everything i know 
jungles like.